episode one of Another Cup. This is going to be one of our uh, side episodes for the podcast. It will not be a weekly segment, but just more of a just more of a a little something on the side. That's why I uh, came up with extra cup. But I've got a, an amazing guest. I've got some coffee, and we're going to uh, talk, laugh, have a good time, maybe help somebody that's maybe trying to jump into some content creating. But um, with me here, I have uh, Twitch's very own, YouTube's very own, TikTok's very own. Uh, what is that? Is there more? There's probably a million more. But uh, the amazing, the hardworking, the uh, beautiful, the uh, super <laughs> charisma. There's, there's a lot. There's a lot. But we have uh, Tabby K here with us. Hello. I got my coffee here, too. Nice. That's that's most in uh, as I broke my mic. Oh no! <laughs> Wait, is it still? Can you still hear it? I can still hear you. Maybe the mic is still working. Then I don't know what I did, but I did something. Is it completely disconnected? <laughs> it is. <laughs> it might be the uh, the camera's mic picking up right now. But oh. This is how we do it here. On a, on a, we're super ghetto like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's it keeps continuing on sheer willpower. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, that is. Oh. What's up? Uh, okay, sorry. Your your mic and your camera, I think, just did a little switch after you plugged that back in. So you're coming in a lot clearer to me right now. Okay. Yeah. So it was picking up by the by the camera. Yeah. This is the fun thing about uh, working on the internet. <laughs> you learn oh as you go. Gosh. No, there's always going to be a tech hiccup at any point. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, before we get into all the amazing things you do, let's get into uh, some coffee. I went regular Folgers with, uh, I don't get milk anymore. I'm trying to chill out. So I, I get like the powder. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, the instant? I yeah, yeah. I went with the French vanilla and just regular Folgers coffee ground today. I didn't go, I didn't spaz out today, but what, what do you got for them? Mm. Uh, well, I have a stump down brand uh, that I got at Target. I think it's just the regular, I use a French press, so it's just the regular, I think, ground medium blend coffee um, that, that I, I brewed this morning. And it's now 7.46 p.m. here. So I just heated it up in the microwave. Nice. Hey, I like it. It's the consistency of mud at this point, <laughs> but I need it after a, a day at work. I was actually setting up to do a promo video that's going to come out uh, right before this episode drops on YouTube. So I was being lazy. You know how on the coffee pot you can take the actual lid off? I didn't. I pulled mm -hmm. the lid back. And I was just trying to clean the inside. I was in a rush. I tried to clean the inside and the lid all together while it's still attached. And I pulled back so hard on the lid that the entire back of the coffee pot broke off, glass and all. So I had to run. Yeah, I had to run to Walmart, and I got this super mini one now. But it, it's like a <laughs> it's like a foreign one. I haven't messed with it, but it's like a foreign one now. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, there's four different ways you can do some shit on it i don't know what it is I'm, I'm simple throw some coffee grounds in and get this shit going but <laughs> yeah i well now coffee youtube is my new thing um and coffee tiktok so morgan drinks coffee she's a lovely uh youtube channel and tiktok that's like super popular now if you need any coffee advice she got me back into coffee she's nice. so amazing so nice nice <laughs> that's I'm a free so... advertisement for her yeah, yeah right right <laughs> hey uh sure when you edit this video edit all of that out no, no, I'm, kidding, I'm, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding uh all right well let's start off with um Let's start in with how I found your Twitch account, because I think to me it was kind of a funny story. It might not be that funny to everybody no, else. No, I want to hear it. <laughs> so I had just got through with a, <laughs> I just got through with a Twitch stream and um, we have a friend in our community who streams and I went to check out her uh, stream. I just had it on while I was chilling on the couch. I had dinner. I had to cook. I had to get ready. Like so much going on. It was on a Sunday and uh, my mom FaceTimes me. And so I answer and she wants to talk about things that are going on in the world. We're like, our, yeah, everything going on in the world, we talk about it. Mm -hmm. So we're on FaceTime and out the corner of my eyes, I see your stream on the recommended. It's the top one. 
and you're dressed as Lady D. And I thought, oh, yeah. that's fucking awesome. But I'm on FaceTime, and I'm not thinking about, like, going into the video or anything like that. Like, I'm talking to my mom, oh, and... <laughs> and I'm about I'm about to uh, about to flex for you. She had a lot of people in the thing, which is automatically a, oh that's dope. But no, I'm cool because I'm I, and I'm judgmental, and this is what I get for judging. But I thought no, she's not going to be one who like communicates with the people. It's just going to be one of those oh this is super cool and like you respect the art and everything. But I personally, and this is not a knock for anybody else. Like everybody has their own thing. Uh, but I personally like to be in chats where you can communicate with the person and like mm -hmm. laugh and share games and things like that. Exactly. So I'm still not thinking much about it. And I'm just FaceTiming my mom and I was like, my mom doesn't know anything about gaming or care, but she's heard about this Lady D character because of all the things going on. No way, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> I was like, all right, mom, I know we're talking about some real life shit. But look at this real quick. So I clicked on the channel and had you on. She was like, that looks so good. I was like, yeah, I know. It is really cool. Aww. And then it's like, all right, back to some real life shit. <laughs> so this is where it gets a little, <laughs> probably a little fucked up. I was like, this is so cool. I'm still looking while my mom is talking. I like, I moved the phone kind of out the way. Like I'm doing something while she's talking. And I'm really just looking at the stream. I was like, this cosplay is awesome. Like this looks dope. Aww. So I mute my end on the phone. <laughs> and that's when I had reached out and I hit the follow button and I and I had chatted and uh <laughs> my mom's just going off about <laughs> Oh my god. I mean we all kind of when our parents are going off about something, we oh all my just god. kinda wanna mute our phones, you know. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, yes. I was pretending that I was doing something. I hope she never looks at this, but I was <laughs> I was pretending I was doing something super important. But the whole time I was just chatting with you and your thing and I was like, she talks to the people. Like I to be honest, when I seen the amount of people, yeah. I was like, she's not gonna she's not gonna talk to people. <laughs> That's I tr I try my best. I feel like there's always improvement with communication that you can do in a stream. But when you're playing like a story based game like Resident Evil and you're like in that story, it's it's a fine line between like getting into the game and also interacting with chat to a certain extent. And I hope I hope everyone feels welcome in my streams because I've been there where you're a no you're a new person in someone's stream and they completely ignore you and right. everyone in chat ignores you and you feel like completely low. You feel like people are purposefully ignoring you because they don't want you. And I don't want anyone to ever feel like that in my streams. And I never I'm super social, uh I can't believe that I do what I do right now because, like, if I looked at this as a kid, there's no way. I'm super antisocial. I, I get really nervous to this day in, in big groups of people. Or if mm -hmm. you take me around people that I don't know, I can, like, I just freak out. Like, I, I'll leave the house and go outside and do something for a little bit. Like, I just get my nerves get really bad. But I'm getting better and better with the more that I do this. I still, to this day, can't believe that I'm doing this <laughs> right now. But uh, I never got that feeling from you. It was super, from the second I came in, you were super talkative. And uh, what you are with your chat is amazing. And I and I agree with the story-based game. Yakuza, I have to pause every five minutes <laughs> to check and make sure I didn't miss anybody. Or it, It's tough when you're doing story-based games. Yeah, I mean, I go, I scroll back to make sure that I get everyone's messages and I, I hear everything and I feel so bad. I feel really bad if I miss someone in chat and because it does happen. Like, inevitably, it's going to happen, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, you um, can't. Yeah, you can't get everybody every single time. But I was thinking the same thing, actually, um, the other day that I used to be a very antisocial person especially going through school and getting in front of a crowd to talk was my biggest fear and I feel like as I get much older <laughs> and also um, just more experience with all these different platforms that I'm on uh, including Twitch especially that it really does help decrease that anxiety when talking to others even in real life and I feel like that's definitely one benefit that you don't see, I guess, because I'm not in school. <laughs> in right, the right. I used to be. <laughs> right. But yeah, I was thinking that the other day, too. Nice. And that's the other beautiful thing about Twitch that I 
that I've uh, discovered is that you meet people who you think you're the only one who goes through these things, but you meet so many people who have similar situations and similar stories. And uh, just like right now, I just meet somebody who's gone through things that I've went through as a child, just super antisocial. And you understand that feeling. Even when you said that, I knew that it had to have come from somewhere for you to understand that feeling. Somebody, a lot of people won't understand how somebody might feel if you get in somebody's chat and say, Hey, what's going on? And they don't respond how low that person can feel. Cause some people would just be like, Oh, okay, cool. Whatever. Like, and it's nothing, but some people like that can hurt a lot. And you're just like, damn, like I am yeah. low to earth. I'm trying to reach out and like, interact with you and I'm being ignored and no, yeah. I don't want to, feel I don't want to make anyone feel like that <laughs> right for sure for sure and definitely uh y'all should check our twitch page out because that doesn't happen there <laughs> but uh, so did you uh finish the conversation with your mom probably not it never it never finishes I always, <laughs> I always find some kind of way to get off the phone once we start going for too long <laughs> uh, well, that my mom is the same way and then she'll say okay goodbye and another thing and it'll be like an, another hour that we're on yeah the phone. oh my another god thing. yeah 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 it's not it's not gonna end i've literally told my mom before all right i gotta get off here i gotta go stream i've got this to do i've got this to do she'd be like all right well uh how are you gonna do tonight and i'm just like i, I gotta go <laughs> like we don't have time for another conversation i gotta go <laughs> uh but my mom oh, doesn't ahead. really understand streaming, but it seems like your mom does, which is awesome. No, no, she definitely does. <laughs> she oh, does. Okay. She can't. Oh, she idea. yeah, no, no, no. She she has no idea really what she understands that I play games. She doesn't understand uh what all goes on with it. She doesn't like download the Twitch or anything. She she can't even get into YouTube. If she gets locked out of logged out of YouTube or Facebook or anything, she's like mm -hmm. fucked because she doesn't know how to get back in. Like she she's just very supportive, oh. very very supportive. But she just oh, she has good. no clue what's happening. <laughs> oh, that's so nice of her though. Yeah, yeah, she definitely is. She's uh she's a single parent basically. So throughout our whole lives, she was always. She was always there and always let us know that uh, deeply we can do it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. She is. She Aww, is. That's lovely. Yeah. Nice. But anyways, enough of her. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> so let's start out. not about her. <laughs> yeah, not at all, mom. <laughs> um, let's start out before we get to like your Twitch and stuff. Uh, I, I'll never forget one of the things I asked you about was... Um, if you played games uh, when you were younger and you got to uh, talking about the original PlayStation and games that you played on that, then you named some systems I've never heard of. So that oh, was pretty cool yeah. too. But why don't you uh, talk a little bit about how you got into gaming and what your favorite games is and why it's Legend of Dragoon. <laughs> no, go ahead. Oh my God. I do remember that. Um, but that brings up my mom. <laughs> my mom is very anti-tech, but back in the day when I was five, um, my mom bought me a Game Gear, which is the system that is very, it's long and rectangular. It had color, it had a color screen back in 1995. So that was kind of, that was before Game, Game Boy had color screens. And so I've never heard of this. Video. Yeah, this is, uh, so Game Gear, it had uh, rectangular black it was super heavy for back then and it ran on six double a batteries and you'd get maybe like two to three hours of gameplay on it <laughs> before it died and i would play that with my mom we eventually both i got a, a game boy um and it was from then on it was up and forward with playstation nintendo and everything and my mom was very supportive of of me playing video games my dad really wasn't in the picture as much my mom was a stay-at-home mom back then so she was much more involved uh with my development and right. she would want to play video games with me she was very supportive and i know a lot of moms a lot of parents were like video games rot your brain even from like yeah. the 90s on <laughs> my they, mom <laughs> oh, <laughs> Um, but having that support um, for that, she thought she thought of video games as like sort of uh, an escape from the hassles of life. And they still kind of are to a lot of people. But uh, it's I think it was pretty uncommon for parents back then to be as supportive as they might be to, or as 
as common as they are today. Video games weren't as common and sought after back then. Uh, so I, I owe it all to her. And I love my mom for that. One of the, one of the many things I love her for. That's but, awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, my, my favorite video game um, would probably, I mean, I loved Legend of Dragoon. Uh, but you're about to break my heart. <laughs> <laughs> but I have like a lot of feelings for different games like Okami, um, the Golden Sun series, like Final Fantasy IX is my favorite Final Fantasy. I, I hear that a lot. The Final Fantasy. I've never played it, but I've, I hear everybody say Final Fantasy IX. Really? I feel like it was the, the, the what was it? Like the black sheep of the, the family, I suppose. Um, Wait, is it nine games. or maybe it was 10? Does 10 sound I right? I, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> It was one of those, it felt like it was either 9 or 10 that I always hear people, it's one of those Final Fantasy games that people say I feel say like was, a lot of people say they love 10, but for yeah. me it was 9. Okay, it might have been 10 <laughs> that I heard the most of. Oh, there's too many Final Fantasies. Um, but yeah, Final Fantasy 9, Okami, uh, Persona, the Persona series, a lot of people like, those are like my favorite, ga- all favorite all-time games, kind of. See, I had for me uh, growing up, it was a little, it was a little weird. But um, growing up in the neighborhood that we grew up in, it was you were really the oddball if you played anything other than sports. Like growing up in our neighborhood, it was like black people don't do mm-hmm. that kind of shit. So yeah. when I first seen Legend of Dragon, we had we had one white friend in our neighborhood, and my mom was best friends with his mom. So naturally, me and him were like the best of friends. And I would go over, and he would play Legend of Dragon. I was like yo, this is like really cool. Like, what is this? And I, to this day, I think now as a grown man and just getting on Twitch might be the first time I've ever had conversations with people about that because my friend circle doesn't play that shit. Like, it's like everybody come to the house and let's play NBA and like, what? and we do that. But I legit used to like sneak games in the house and just play. And that's probably why I've never played any of the Final Fantasies or I was catching up on a lot of things. Yeah, because you just you didn't want to be that guy that everybody was like, he's the one that plays that weird shit. Like, so (laughs) so I am doing a lot of catching up. And that's what I love about Twitch is I feel more like, oh, man, people I can relate to people I can talk. And of course, now it's grown men. Nobody's like nobody gives a fuck anymore. But just as a kid, it was just so uh, so weird. But that's why I love these conversations. I learn more games like now I want to play Final Fantasy nine and see see what it is that you're talking about. Yeah, it was a different time back then. I don't know what back it then was for you, but for me, it was born in 1989. That It was like the early 90s. I'm 91. I wasn't too far back. Okay, no, no, you're not. Two, two years later, I was coming out ready to, ready to take the world <laughs> over. <laughs> no, we did. Uh, and it was so weird because my dad was that way too. But the only time he would go outside of anything that he considered Black people things was... Resident Evil, which is so stupid because there's no such thing as white games and black games. But it just it, during the time period in the area that we lived in, that's how things were classified. But he would play that and my mom would read the strategy book to him and they would just and that we would sit down and just watch during that time. And and that, like that was a thing. And I remember being like, this is weird because it's like we're not supposed to play things like this, but he's doing it. And that was like the one exception was like Resident Evil. But uh, yeah, so I he- was he playing like the first Resident Evil? I remember uh, Code Veronica. And one thing about me, and my chat laughs at me about this all the time. They say I have goldfish memory. My memory is the worst of all time. I forgot what I wore yesterday. Like my memory is bad. I remember Code Veronica for whatever weird reason. And then I cannot remember. He's played a couple of them. And I can't, I can't tell you which numbers they were, but I remember Code Veronica. I remember characters like Jill uh, Valentine. Jill I almost said Jill Scott. <laughs> Jill Valentine and uh, Claire Redfield, Leon. I remember characters. I used to have the Tyrant toy, mm-hmm. the figure yeah. with the with the long claws and the and the heart. As a kid? I think that was... Yeah, yeah, my mom found the toy. And I wish to this day that I would have kept that because I was going through and looking at how much they're selling these for. I had yeah. Rose... <laughs> I had Rose from Legend of Dragoon, and I wish I would have kept that too. Like my mom got me all kind of cool like figures, all my wrestling figures, all of that worth so much money now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I need to go through my Pokemon cards. 
when I was a kid, thank well, my mom supported my Pokemon addiction, but <laughs> I, she's happy she supported it now. I don't know about back then, but now yeah. <laughs> cards are worth a ton. I need to get them appraised, but I'm like, mom, you need to send my car, my, my binder of trading cards from North Carolina, send them to Minnesota so that I can appraise them. Is there anything in there that you know of right now that you remember that you had that you think might be like, I remember when I would drag my mom to the, the trading card stores back in the nineties, like that was really weird for like a little girl to go into back then with her mom. And I would be like, <laughs> mom, please buy me this Charizard card, the holographic Charizard card that they'd sell for like $200 back then. And oh now God. I was like, I told my mom that a, a little while ago, I was like, mom, you know how much those holographic Charizard cards are now? You should have bought it for me back then. More than 200 for sure. <laughs> it kept you nice and comfy if you'd done that for me. <laughs> I went to, uh, I actually put this out on Twitter too. I went the other day to go look, uh, well, when I went to go get my new coffee pot, I just wanted to look at the, cause they don't have a lot of Pokemon cards out here anymore. Like as soon as they come in, they're gone. So they had them in like, uh, this, they had them like, uh, and the ones that come in two packs in it and they had like five of them. And I was just like, I wasn't going to buy any cause I just bought some and I was just kind of looking. And while I'm standing in front of it, just looking, somebody comes up and snatches all of them. And then starts moving things in the aisle to see if there are some hidden. And I was like, this is this is out of line. Like, this is too far. <laughs> this is way That's too insane. far. Yeah, 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 it is. But <laughs> yeah, the Pokemon things is way out of control. I didn't realize. So the only reason I even got back into them because I have nephews and they're collecting them. And uh, we had a Comic Con in Beaumont, Texas. I, this was maybe like a year or two ago. No, it had to have been two years ago because it wasn't during COVID. Uh, it had been like two years ago and we were there and the guy was selling them like all kind of different ones. So I was like, I'll just get them like a book. Cause they had like boxes that they were selling like $5 for like a hundred or something in them. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, so I picked up like two boxes of those and I gave them to him. I was like, that'd be kind of cool to like get back into that. And right when that was happening in my mind, I didn't realize all this stuff was going on <laughs> with Pokemon cards being oh, hard yeah. to get. I went into GameStop and uh, the guy was like, um, he said, this is all you're getting? I was like, yeah. He said, I'm surprised most people come in here and clean it out. And I thought, I didn't think anything about it. I was like, that's weird, mm-hmm. but okay. And then uh, I would go out to like Walmart and stuff and I'd realize there's not any cards <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> like, this is a real thing. It's crazy. The I'm a member of the PSA, which is a group of, that does card appraising for like anything from baseball cards to Pokemon cards and they have stopped accepting new appraisals that they people mail into the company to get appraised to then ship back to you so you can sell them for lots of money um and they're only they they stopped taking them for months because they're like we need to hire new appraisers we need to we need to like we have such a backlog that people are waiting months and months and months to get their cards back from us it's insane that is that is yeah the pokemon i'm just like thing. biding my time waiting for me to send my cards to them until they send <laughs> cards again i know i hear you i was thinking about some we had like baseball cards and stuff like that but i was never into baseball until i got a little older so i don't even know what we had uh, my dad had a bunch of these before he left and he never took them with him but i i'll never i don't know where they're at but i need to talk to my mom she has golden michael jordan plates inside like a tin can and it still had the plastic wrap around them and they're golden like michael jordan cards on the inside and i need to figure out what's going on with that <laughs> before somebody else decides they want it <laughs> i don't know what it is or how much it's worth but just golden michael jordan cards sound like it might be worth some shit so i need to like get on that pretty soon you do need to keep track of that stuff yeah. she might already cash in on, on it and didn't tell nobody <laughs> Oh, and you need to talk to her about that. <laughs> Even things like children's books are getting, are selling for tons. And I, my mom used to read to me so much as like a, a very young child. So she has like the first editions of some children's books, even like even Disney VHS tapes and stuff. You just need to check your childhood and like yeah. che- check and see how much that's all worth. It's, do you think today's stuff will be like what kids are getting today like i like i don't really know what's going on too much outside of like i know there's like 
Fortnite action figures. I was looking at uh, that new Space Jam movie uh, with LeBron. I seen they had mm-hmm. figures for the Looney Tunes and things. I thought that might be worth something one day. And I didn't get it. But you think mm-hmm. today's stuff will do that? I have no idea. I don't, I have no idea what the kids are doing these days. I <laughs> dog sitting at uh, a client's house and I looked at a bowl on the kitchen table and I didn't realize, I didn't know what Orbeez were. Uh, so I had to look that up. Do you know what that is? No, I've never even heard of this. I don't think. It's, it's just like little plastic balls that you put in water and they get humongous. They get huge. I was like, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played Fortnite. I I don't know if I'll see the new Space Jam. I did see the first Space Jam in theaters. Yeah. But uh, I don't. Just I'm not. Touch. Yeah. I'm out of I'm, touch. I'm, I'm an old person. I'm with you. I'm not big on the new Space Jam thing either, but I just looked at it now. Like, I, I guess I'm part of this crowd now because I was just thinking, could this be worth some money one day? This is a LeBron James Space Jam action figure. Could it be worth something? Like, I don't care if I rock with him or the movie. Like, is this going to be worth like a thousand dollars one day? Like, <laughs> I'm kind of yeah. in that mind frame now. Like, again, with Pokemon, when I went to go see the first Pokemon movie in theaters, they were giving out free commemorative cards and coins for the Pokemon trading card game. It was a holographic Pikachu coin. And I don't know what happened to that trading card coin, but now they're selling for so much bank on eBay and I'm just kicking myself. I know I'm with my mom put when we got older, she put all of it in a trash bag and threw it all out. And I was just at the age where I didn't care. Like we were getting into that point where we were out doing other things that we shouldn't have been doing. And at that point, I just didn't care about that stuff anymore. And now looking back, I was like, why? (laughs) Why did I let that happen? (laughs) Uh, My mom is thankfully like a hoarder. So she keeps all my old plate walkthroughs of video games and all my old video game cartridges and i'm like mom keep that stuff it's good it's valuable just keep it (laughs) let me go look through it your mom held it down (laughs) my mom keeps all those she loves to keep all those memories (laughs) (laughs) well that's good though but then uh let's fast forward to uh your entire childhood we'll skip all of that now and jump into uh (laughs) your job because this is funny i don't want to uh mess up your job title or anything like that but the (laughs) <laughs> the first I heard of this, and this was another thing that's oh, funny. God. The second I got into your Twitch stream, okay. it was about <laughs> anal glands. Oh, and I God. had no idea what that was when you first said it. I was like, what the hell are anal what? glands? And then it's been almost every stream since when I come in to say, hey, there was some wild conversation about anals and things going on. <laughs> I'm like, what does she do for a living? <laughs> uh, well, I'm a veterinary assistant. Uh, studying to become a veterinary technician and uh, I mean it's it's not human (laughs) anal anything but (laughs) I I learned when I googled anal glands (laughs) I learned real quick (laughs) no one time a troll came in we were just watching we were just just chatting on twitch and we were watching youtube videos and a troll came in and posted a link to a youtube video with a vet expressing anal glands and i was like oh it's just my my day job okay (laughs) but they're trying to be gross and i was like okay so what was the point of that (laughs) yeah what a huge fail yeah that was a big fail um but i have gone through a lot of jobs trying to figure out my uh, purpose and I, like everyone does my purpose in life and it was only about two to three years ago that i i figured out well i went with what i always wanted to do and i'm so glad i'm in the job i'm in right now and working towards uh, becoming a technician because I, I love what I do. And I've gone through a lot of different jobs where I'm just not happy with myself. Right. So I'm happy to be where I am now. And don't don't listen to your parents. Don't listen to anyone else <laughs> when you're deciding what you want to do. Just follow your head and your heart. Follow yes. what, what you want to do, not anyone else. Don't do anything for anyone else but yourself. I I a thousand percent agree. Did you, uh, have you thought more about, uh, when things, or if this is even part of your, even part of your plan, uh, if it's part of your plan to blow up with things like YouTube and be like this big star, like, is 
that's something where if when you reach that level, like I said, if that's something that you want to do, uh, you would leave all that, like let I'm, that go or? I'm not sure. I think it would maybe be <laughs> if I ever <laughs> knock on wood blew up um, on any platform and was able to make money off of that, uh, then I would want to just maybe do part-time work. It's always, always work towards getting money at your day job, of course, and right. having a solid income. <laughs> right. Um, but I like during COVID, especially, I just realized that um, when people were scrambling to figure out what to do and everything was closed, including my clinic for a few weeks, um, and I was working very few hours, I was, oh, well, just everyone was a little bit, you know, a little more sad, a little bit more depressed and withdrawn. And I realized that, oh, I miss my job so much because I miss getting to just be around animals. And that was affecting me physically and mentally because scientifically there has been uh, benefits to being around animals and with um, dopamine reactions, uh, to just even looking or touching animals, it affects us. And I think I would want to be in the, in a, an animal-based field for the rest of my life. I think, um, something to do with animals and yeah, if I blew up somewhere, I mean, that would be my main focus, but I would never not have animals in my life. Right, for sure, for sure. Um, when do you know? I know you said that it took a little bit of bouncing around, but was there a certain moment that happened that you knew this was it? Was it just being around an animal and you knew that? Like, was there anything specific that happened? Oh my god, I I've been in a lot of places. <laughs> I've been in a lot of places around the U.S. and had a lot of different jobs, from like working at a lingerie boutique to just like office cubicle work. And I uh, just eventually I had to like see my ther see a therapist, like figure myself out and what I wanted to do. And all since a younger age, I love my parents and we talked about parents, but they do have a big impact in, I think, unintentionally inhibiting my growth, like psychological and personal growth. And right. I know it's nof nothing they'd ever want to willingly do to me, but I think some parents will stifle um, some, some growth as a child, just because your parents are in a certain place and they're comfortable with you being in that certain, I guess, class system or level with them. Um, and my parents would say, oh, don't go into the veterinary field from a young age because, oh, it's sad. You need to be really smart to get into vet school. Yeah. And um, which is not what you want to hear from your parents. But yeah. that's why I didn't pursue, pursue veterinary school at a young age. But uh, in my free time, when I wasn't working, uh, doing something else, I would be volunteering at animal rescues, high kill shelters. I would be fostering cats, uh, working with like just pet sitting in my free time. And then when I'm at my day job and I'm miserable, I would think, you know, what makes me happy when I'm not at work? Um, well, playing video games and nerding out about that fiction stuff. Uh, fantasy stuff is makes me happy and animals working with animals and even through the tough times I've been through the tough times with animals and my parents can't tell me oh it's so sad because I've been through those times right and I said you know fuck it I'm gonna quit my job I'm gonna go back to school online and I'm going to do what I always wanted to do and been it's been two to three years now I've never been happier with my job I'm so much happier mentally and physically like it's been amazing so that's why I say always do what you want to do that makes you yeah. happy don't listen to anyone else 
And that and that's real talk that a lot of people don't like to have because it it can come off in, in a in a bad way. Cause like you said, people like your parents don't mean to do it. But I a thousand percent understand what you're saying. I used to tell my mom everything that I wanted to do. I wanted to be I swore I was gonna be yeah. the next rock one day. And mm-hmm. she would tell me, like, to be a wrestler, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. Like it's not gonna work for you, you're not gonna put in the work. And, and I was like, Okay, well, I'll be a rapper. It's like you're never gonna make it as a rapper. And it was just like you gotta be realistic. And it's just like sometimes I think back and I was like, Yeah, it sounds crazy but what if i could have been those things like what if it would have worked and now yeah, yeah you know so yeah i thought i was gonna agree with you on that we can get we can move on to uh so you we got through your career and and all the glory that comes with dealing with anal glands no, okay let me ask this though before we before we bounce i have to know now because i i did not want to google this but now we're here what uh, what exactly is an anal gland is it like a bad thing is it something that you like what do you no, do with that it's well from an anatomical and evolutionary standpoint for cats and dogs and other species species sorry um they definitely need those glands they're they're glands they should be there um uh humans don't have them first of all but i'm glad um, i don't (laughs) but it's um before i mean they don't really need them as much as they used to before they were domesticated cats and dogs but now they fill up with sort of fluid or a, a, a substance that it should be expressed naturally what when defecating usually but sometimes it doesn't happen so sometimes they get impacted or they they need a little assistance with that and that's where the vets and the vet techs come in um just doing a good old and even groomers will do them sometimes some groomers will some some won't (laughs) um but you just got to do the 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 hand motion it's like eight eight and two o'clock <laughs> on the anus <laughs> so you just got it it's like popping a pimple kind of similarly okay, okay. i was glad i had got it uh figured out because like i said never hearing anal glands when i got in the chat i was like what what is her job anals and things like <laughs> i didn't know what deal? was going on <laughs> what is this girl's deal uh she's obsessed with <laughs> anal anal stuff uh do you have any pets um, no, we decided at a young age, uh, man, I, I definitely hate to tell this story, but, uh, we, we didn't do well with animals at all and we couldn't afford them for the most part, which is why if you cannot afford them, like they're like children, you probably shouldn't do it. That's a very mature, that's a very yeah. good idea. Very yeah. mature yeah. idea. Yeah. So for, after a while, my mom used to, she never wanted to do it cause she knew we couldn't afford to, to do what needed to be done with animals, Mm -hmm. like the regular checkups and things. But us being so young and crying and we wanted one so bad, she would just be like, "Ah, okay. And then it would tear her up every time. A lot of times the the pets didn't make it very long. And um, she told us one day, she said, guys, like they're dying. Like we can't, we can't do this. Like y'all have to understand that. Like you you can't do that to animals. And, uh, now I'm in a position where I could afford, uh, animals, but I don't have the time. And I, and I feel like that's just as important. I I just, I just don't have time to, to, uh, play with, uh, play with an animal, give it the attention and love that it needs. I just like, it just wouldn't be a good idea for me at this point in life, but I would love to get a dog again. (laughs) <laughs> I would love it more than anything, but I would have to, something would have to give. Either I need to blow up <laughs> on Twitch so I can quit my regular job and just be at home, or something it would have to give. But right now, I just know it's not a good idea. That's a very mature way of thinking, because in my line of work, a lot of people don't think that way. And they don't realize they need the time and the money. So yeah. that I'm very glad for people like you and your mother that understand that. Oh yeah, definitely. It's sad. I remember, uh, I, so I used, to, I was like you, I worked a lot of jobs and none of them like make any sense as far as like, <laughs> they're, they're all over the place. But I was, uh, I worked on, uh, I was a lineman once I worked on power lines and we were writing down. Uh, yeah, I wasn't good, <laughs> but we were writing, <laughs> we were writing, <laughs> we were writing down one day through the country and, uh, I looked to the right and somebody had a horse and they didn't even have like, it was so weird because the houses were like next to each other. 
and there wasn't like a they barely had a yard and the horse was like this thin like of course not literally this thin but it was it was really like you could tell that horse has not been eating mm -hmm. i just thought why you don't have the room you don't have oh, apparently you're not feeding it yeah so much responsibility and cost so much money yes 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 I agree but when you when you had to look up anal glands i was like i want i needed to ask if you had animals <laughs> Yeah, we did. We I still want to know what anal gland was. We we barely walked them like they were supposed to. It was that thing we were kids, we were children, and it was like you need to walk the dog. I was like, mm, do we need to? And never did it. I mean, of course they always ate and had water. Like that was never a problem. But it was just the things like taking it to the vet and uh mm -hmm. walking like you're supposed to and like your kids. So it's like play with it for five minutes and then you're sick of it. And it's just my mom was like, Yeah, we can't, we can't do this. Mm -hmm. This is too much. Yeah. So yeah, until I get into a better position to where I can pay the attention to an animal and things like that, I just figured, not now. <laughs> it's always the mom that has to shoulder the the burden of an animal, of a pet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, we, she had to because my dad uh, was like, I, I would say I have a little bit of this too, and it's something that I'm working on. Uh, I work on myself too. I'm far from perfect, but uh, one thing that I get from him is a big I don't give a fuck attitude. And it's something that I think a lot of people wouldn't get because I've tamed that so much <laughs> from when I was younger. But being around it, my dad is super I don't give a fuck attitude all the time. Like he's probably one of the rudest people you would ever meet if you didn't know him personally. It was just real. And he's from a different he he's from a different thing. And I, I'm starting to understand that more as an adult. Like, of course, like you were saying earlier about uh yours, he wasn't always around either. Uh he's from a really bad area of Washington, uh DC, and his parents weren't there either. So I'm learning that he wasn't in a position to have kids and to be a father the way he was. So I mean I try to understand things like that too, but yeah, he was real I don't give a fuck attitude. Things were, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was different. It was different times. So she had to carry a big load of uh, helping us to not <laughs> become that. She, she did a really Aww. good job. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. Uh, let's move over to your Twitch. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> let's get into some Twitch stuff. So, of course, like I said earlier, I first uh, joined into your streams when you were doing uh, Lady D on Resident Evil. I love Resident Evil streams. Uh, I can't play them because I, I'm I'm so scared of everything. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> but I love to watch. I still have not. I haven't been able to, of, of course, you know, with work and everything. I haven't been able to sit and watch anybody play it from beginning to end. But I've popped in on anytime somebody's playing it. I try to pop in and watch. And I have so far avoided anybody doing the dollhouse. And I have been. Oh, Benavento. Yeah, I've been like, thank God, I haven't seen that shit. <laughs> Have you watched any playthroughs on YouTube? No. All I've done so far is catch people that I, like, follow. Some of them been mm -hmm. played it when it first came out and stuff, and I've hopped in and out, but I haven't done anything Okay. Else. If you want to watch, I've watched tons of people play it on YouTube and Twitch, but if you want stellar playthroughs on YouTube, uh, Markiplier or Jacksepticeye's playthroughs of Resident or Evil 8. Or you can watch Tabby Cat on YouTube, <laughs> who has a Resident Evil walkthrough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's going to be the one I go to when I when I do get time to go uh, watch it. Because I do want to watch it from beginning to end. And we're going to use uh, Tabby Cat. But for the uh, listeners, you can throw saying. out more people if you want to. Oh, but it was but, such a, it's such a good game. It looks amazing. And and there was one part. So there's one part I did see from the dollhouse. I didn't know it was a dollhouse until uh, a friend had told me. But I, I was planning, <laughs> I'm planning a trip to Portland next year. So I was talking to my mom and we were just talking about some things that would be cool. And I had the laptop up watching somebody. And I, I used to be a terrible worker. I didn't know if it was like muted that it didn't count as alert. Mm -hmm. But I had the thing muted. I thought I was lurking. <laughs> Apparently not. But uh, I had that pulled up while I'm talking to my mom about Portland. And I'm kind of watching because the person's like going under a bed and stuff like that. But it's muted. So I'm oh, thinking no. this isn't going to be bad. Yeah, I'm not thinking it's like muted. I'm like, okay, whatever. And then something happens around the bed. I don't want to uh, spoil for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. But something happens and I jump so hard. <laughs> and I'm like, it's muted. What is, what is this? It's 
probably the scariest moment in a Resident Evil, the series I have ever experienced. I, I keep telling, I keep saying that that is the scariest, scare, the most scared, God, I can't speak, uh, the most scared I have ever been on Twitch streaming. That was, but it was beautiful. I love being scared when I'm with other people. <laughs> well, because you said, I, uh... I want to. I hope my memory is doing me right here. It was you that I had the conversation with that you don't do scary movies and things, right? Because you don't like yeah. to see people be killed. I don't like watching torture, or uh, I don't like seeing people get hurt, and I don't do scary movies. I, I'll do okay. psychological horror, especially like psychological horror video games. But I don't mind all the violence and gore that comes with video games, though, <laughs> unless it's so right. excessive. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the different medium. I don't know what makes it different. <laughs> I, no, I. That's why I'm glad we're talking about this because you're the only person who understands where I'm coming from. My brother used to. I hate scary movies. Like I used to watch Scream, and I know what you did last summer when I was younger. Those never bothered me. My sister took me to see Saw one year for my oh, birthday. Oh, that's so the, much worse. I think. Yes, yes, the original one, and it screwed me up for life. And uh, my brother like would always be like let's just go to the movies man like you got to get over that fear and stuff and instead of like you said earlier don't listen to other people do your own thing i went to the movie theater with him to watch green inferno have you heard of that no i haven't it's a uh, cannibals is the right word right it's a hannibal or cannibals cannibals right they eat humans yes yes okay so there's this one scene which spoiler alert for anybody who wants to see green inferno but it is old uh <laughs> you've had the, your chance yeah, yeah you've had your chance it's over with now no the all right so the plane wrecks uh because they're down there messing with these people on their island and they're trying to cut things down just doing dumb shit that they have no business doing and i'm like okay maybe maybe it won't be that bad the very first kill the dude like gets up off the floor because like the plane had wrecked and all that he gets up and like the blade just knocks his head off and i'm like oh my god this this isn't going to be good uh <laughs> Oh my god. Bad and this is, yes. Oh yeah, it only gets worse. Um uh, they get to another scene where they have this guy uh they're bringing them into the camp and I guess they think, "Oh, okay, they're being friendly. They give them water and food and then they lay them down and they just get to hacking on them while he's alive." The scre mm -hmm. him screaming for his life is bothering. I don't like to hear people screaming for their I life. I don't like screams either. In yes. Movies. Exactly. So I'm like sweating, I'm freaking out. My brother's laughing because I'm going through it. And I'll spare all the details. They do some really terrible things. And I just blacked out right in the movie theater. Just passed smooth out. It was way too much. Yeah, it was way too much. And my brother, my brother got me up. Like, I'm seeing dots. Like, things are blurry. He was like, you need to go to the car. Like, I'm not sitting in the car by myself now. Like, now I'm here. Like, I don't know what to do. I can't sit in the car by myself now. Like, I, I had to sit through the, it, it only got, that was the worst part of the movie, but it's psychologically some sick things just happen after that. And it, I was like, oh my, I, I give up. I will never do it again. Don't ever ask me to do it again. I'm done. It will never happen yeah. again. Let's go watch that Disney movie next door. <laughs> yes. 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 But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so my first, uh, back to your Twitch, uh, I got to see the Resident Evil and now you're doing the Mass Effect and as far as mm -hmm. cosplay alone not the actual gameplays or anything but the cosplay alone because you did cosplay for Resident Evil and you've also done cosplay for the Mass Effect which one has been your favorite so far oh I don't think anything will top my love for the for Lady D and that her, was awesome and her outfit I love just going I love doing the dress and the big hat and I feel like it's very it's so regal. It's so lovely and nice. And I just love her whole aesthetic. And it's just so much easier too than Mass Effect. All the all the characters in Mass Effect are wearing like latex body armor with their guns. And I can't yeah. I can do right, right. that level of uh, cosplay yet. Um, but it was so it was so great too. Just the whole experience of putting the cosplay together. I was very proud of myself. Um, and just, I just love the whole thing about, I just love everything about Lady Dimitrescu. She's amazing. Yeah. And there, you added so much more with just more than just the actual stream itself. Like even the TikTok videos were hilarious with the, uh, the build your own simp 
Uh, or build a simp oh, yeah, or build something. A simp. Yeah, yeah, with the with the Lady D. There was a lot of Lady D TikToks and photos on IG. It was really cool. I I thought that was really Thank cool. Thank you. I I need to get more into TikTok, and I see that you've gotten some extremely popular TikToks that will have been I so funny. <laughs> I got one, and that's the, that's the funny thing is I got one, and my friend was like, they were hyping me up. That's all it takes is one. You're in there now, and then it was just like, no, you're not. It just goes <laughs> back down from there. But I'm having fun. Like I think uh, TikTok is fun. It's very interesting, a uh, very interesting algorithm and platform. Um, Definitely, Twitch is my all-time favorite platform, of course, but I want to get more into the TikToks. Um, but I'm also like, I have that one, that one TikTok that blew up, quote unquote, and all my rest are in the bottom, which I, I just do what I want to do on TikTok and just see how that plays out. But it is very fun to see, to like wake up and have like hundreds of people liking your videos. Yeah. That's yeah. very new to me. Yeah, the one that I have to this day, every day so far, I get a notification that somebody like, like it slowed down a lot. It used to be, I was getting so many a day and now it's like one or three a day still. And I was just like, that's crazy that that was like months ago and, it, and it's still happening. Yeah. That's similar to mine. I would, like, yeah. I would go, I would cr- my work uh, i feel so bad i check my phone so much at work and you were just talking (laughs) about that everyone was at we had a meeting today a staff meeting and everyone was like stop looking at your phones i was like okay i know i'm sorry but i was just (laughs) like checking my phone every five minutes at work when that happened (laughs) (laughs) it's hard not to you just feel like somebody in that moment (laughs) somebody sent me a youtube uh, compilation it was like dude your video made this compilation It, it was so crazy at one point and then you just realize like from there it's it's weird because i'm like even with twitch i know wrestling is kind of my thing that i know a lot about and uh i tend to do okay there where i where, where i have issues is wrestling is it's such a weird thing because it's a huge thing like everybody knows wwe and uh and it and it felt like they have millions of people who watch. But then it's one of those things like if you ask your immediate circle, how many people do you know that look at it? And it feels that way with TikTok. It's like yeah, you, like, you'll get a couple of likes, but like it almost feels like there's a, a limit on that. So I try to like branch out a little bit. And then it's like we don't we don't really want to see that. Even on Twitch, I have more issues playing other games of like people not really like, no, we we want to see the wrestling fam. <laughs> but I'm like, I don't want y'all are wrestling me to death. <laughs> That like 90s nostalgia for the 90s era of wrestling. I don't, I never watched wrestling as a kid. It was, I think it was too violent for me, even though my mom was also like, it's too violent, don't watch it. (laughs) But I definitely, even I knew back then that the 90s wrestling scene was super popular and people have so much nostalgia for those old wrestlers. Um, And even like I listened to, podcasts about crime and sports and it's a lot of wrestling <laughs> well, I, mean, it's I do too a lot of i do too and yeah. i'm when they're talking about it like that i'm like it's very interesting to hear about the lives of these wrestlers and their careers too even from someone who wasn't um watching them during that time period have you ever heard of the uh series called dark side of the ring no i haven't they tell some stories in there you're just like mind blown there was a uh, one guy's name was new jack and uh i might have heard of him it, you probably so he has stabbed people in the ring for real like pulled knives out and stabbed mm-hmm. people in the ring like when you start hearing these stories about how people got away with murder and uh, you're just like whoa <laughs> you don't think about this stuff as a, as a child but, yeah no it's it's <laughs> it, it was or i don't know i think wrestling has kind of cleaned up a little bit since then a right? lot since a lot the 90s yes yes uh i used to i as i got older a lot of the reasons i stopped watching i didn't like uh see like the way they uh portrayed women wrestlers like mm-hmm. fighting for championships and half naked bra and panties matches and you're just like they're like af- like they're athletes why why are like you wouldn't do that for a dude why, why are we doing this but today it's a whole it's a whole nother thing but uh before we get back to your twitch speaking of things that uh you didn't watch as a child <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe i heard this wrong but i just want to get clarified because this blew my mind i felt like your chat wasn't the you know it was just 
wasn't a conversation a lot of people would be into. But I was like, this was in the back of my mind for a while. Before I asked yeah. you to do the, I got a funny story for that too, before uh, <laughs> about asking you to do this podcast. But I was thinking it through my mind. At my job, I have nothing but time to think. So I was thinking about, all right, how would this interview go? And I was thinking about everything I wanted to ask. And I, I have got to ask this. And mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so on your... Uh, you had a stream where you were doing a charity, which we'll also get to that in a little bit. But mm-hmm. somebody, you brought out the vodka. And somebody said, when you brought out the vodka, it reminded me of Eminem. And I think it went over your head. And so for me, I was like, oh, I get it. And so I put in the chat, like the verse, and said there was Eminem where he said, I just drank a fifth of vodka, you dare me to drive. And I thought maybe I didn't hear you right, but you said, Oh, okay. Is that where that's from? I never listened to Eminem. Yeah, I didn't really listen to Eminem as a kid. Um, I, I was I was weird. I was a weird kid growing up. That blew my mind. Again, <laughs> again with my parents, uh, my parents, it took them quite a while to have a child. I'm an only child. I have no siblings. Um, and they were much older than all of my other friends' parents. Uh, so I kind of grew up listening to like the 60s music, the 50s, 60s. Um, I would be listening to what my, my mom wanted to listen to usually. And we're the only children growing up are kind of like the weird kids. I feel right. like we're not as socially, uh, this is not for every only child, but I was definitely... A, a weird fucking kid that was not didn't have a lot of friends at all and was not um very socially i guess well uh, socially rich right right <laughs> strangers and whatnot um so i wasn't into i never knew like the popular stuff or the popular music especially that we're going off of so yeah it was kind of weird <laughs> it, it just blew my mind i was like wait she's never heard of it like it just sounded so weird <laughs> i've heard eminem songs i just never just listened not. to it i'd listen to like britney spears at the most or like avril lavigne or pink was like right my, right my bad my bad girl music oh, i used to love no doubt <laughs> no i would listen to, I used to no, love doubt. no doubt yeah. yeah they were dope <laughs> We used to, uh, when we was with my mom, that's what we were allowed to listen to. And then my dad had this weird thing of like, uh, I picked this up from him too, this obsession with Tupac. So he would be like, he would turn it on and turn it on like full blast in the house. And my mom would be like, y'all need to go in the room. And we'd be like, damn, I kind of want to hear Tupac. And we'd go in the room. <laughs> but the music was so loud, it made no difference. So we would just sit in the room with like the TV off and just listen. And <laughs> So it was like we picked up that side of it, even though we weren't supposed to listen. Uh, her absolute no when it came to rap. Everything was pretty much okay, unless it was Eminem, DMX, or Pac. Because to her, in her mind, that was the worst of the worst. And it's like, it's not, like none of them are any yeah. better. It's, <laughs> but that was like the worst of the worst. I think I was kind of easy mode for my parents in a lot of aspects. Because yeah. I wasn't very rebellious with trying to figure things out. Really? <laughs> I was yeah. like, I just have my Pokemon, my red and blue. <laughs> And I'm good to go. Just sit me in the corner and I can entertain myself. That's so cool. I love that, though. We, oh, my God, we were so bad. We would find every way. We found people who were uh, illegally getting music and we would just have CDs made. And I'll never forget. my. Yes, I finally got caught one day. I finally got caught. It was like little John and them. It was like, if you don't give a damn, we don't give a fuck. It was like the worst of the cussing. And my dad walked in. I was like, oh, there's no stopping it now. It's already on. And he, oh my God, he went crazy. (laughs) Yeah, he went. (laughs) He went crazy. I thought it was the craziest thing. I was like, like, we hear you listening to Tupac every day. Like, what difference does this make? But, uh, But yeah, no, I did. Just, we can get back to your Twitch. I just wanted to get that out because that was in the back of my mind for a while. Like, does she really mean like she's never listened to an Eminem song? It's not that I never listened to him. I just didn't grow up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> didn't listen hard enough to memorize lyrics like rap nerds like me. Yeah, well, I only- knew like the squeaky clean stuff that was like parodied from Eminem on Nickelodeon or something yeah 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 <laughs> like for sure, guess for who's sure. back that's about my <laughs> extent back then as a kid nice all right so uh now back to the the stream that this happened on you did a yes. uh ILGA charity stream and uh 
I do just want to say for for me, I thought this was really cool because uh, I know this is uh, kind of a dark path, but my mom and dad, uh, of course, as you can tell by looking at me, <laughs> my mom is white and my dad is black. And, and I say that, but I get called everything but mixed. Everything. I've literally been called everything in the world. Like people say, oh, are you from, from this country or this country? Like everything. But um, <laughs> my, my mom's side of the family, them being from Kentucky, was mm-hmm. super anti all of this. Like, Of course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We don't even got to get into that. Y'all know exactly where that goes. Um, so we were always raised as when we were kids. My mom was like, hey, you love everybody. I don't care what they look like, what they act like. Uh, what they're into, you love everybody the same, no matter what. You don't treat people any different. So, good, good for her. Yeah, yes, exactly. So that's that's how we were raised. And um, when it come to LGBTQ, that was never like hatred or anything like that. Was never in us. So as a young age, we were told that that's not how you treat people. But I never educated myself and understood the problems that were going on. I was going through my own issues, and I was selfish in the point of. I don't understand why everybody treats me this way. And I, and I and I guess if you're in that position, it's hard sometimes to think other people go through things too. So, mm-hmm. and it was such a, not a thing with us. So it was almost like a things you don't just pay attention to. Cause you're just like, Oh, that's not my issue. Like I, I don't got nothing to do with that. But the older I got, I was like, I really need to educate myself and, and understand what they go through and, and things like that. And it took um a kid in my school who almost, uh, who almost ended his own life. And from there, yeah. And I will never forget everybody like, Oh, he should have went through with it and just saying some terrible things. I was like, it's more than just like, they go through a lot and I don't understand it or, or anything like that. Cause I'm, I've just never, it's never been anything I've had to deal with, but, um, I still have to educate myself more. I've been, uh, doing better with, with learning things, but your stream was like, when I was like, here's a step I can take like I can I can donate I can do something uh more like take steps and do things to help which is why I personally thought that the stream was really cool and it was finally a chance that I could do something uh I feel bad because I shit on Texas all the time (laughs) but (laughs) out here I live in like super small town in Texas so Uh, mm -hmm. there's not opportunities like that out here to to do things for people like uh from that community so i i was like this is a perfect chance so the second you were putting it on instagram and everything i was like i have to make that stream and and be there to support and things like that and i thought that was really cool but for you personally what made you choose this stream to do oh well that was very kind of you to donate and to to think that and uh try to be more knowledgeable. I also need to be more knowledgeable and my improve myself on uh, the subject of LGBTQIA plus issues um, where I've gone through life questioning a lot about myself and I still have a lot of things about my sexuality to answer. Um, And it's fine that I I'm in a comfortable place where I am kind of, I don't kind of don't label myself right now as as what I am, um, what I, well, just many questions there. Right, right. With Pride Month leaving, um, I, well, I had 14 hour streams, like people on my Twitch will redeem 14 hour streams uh, of me with, they they build up the points, you know, from Twitch and they redeem, I think it's like 90,000 points for a 14 hour stream or something. They hit <laughs> they you got, with another one. <laughs> they they got to work at it to get, to redeem a 14 hour stream. Right. And I, I think they, they do keep redeeming a lot though, but I, it was definitely overdue for me to do a charity stream and especially to do a charity stream for the LGBTQIA plus community. And I was researching, I wanted to do a charity for a global community that helps uh, the LGBT community. And ILGA was definitely uh, a community uh now a global community that helps all, all it has organizations in all different continents to help with the human rights uh, for LGBTQIA communities all over the globe. And I thought, well, this is what I want to 
assist with, not just on a national level, but on a global level, because the U.S. definitely has a lot to work on, but so do a lot of other countries. And there's been a lot of pushback to um, different successes in different countries, um, different continents. Uh, And we we raised over a hundred because it's international. We, everything was in pounds. So yeah, I seen when I went to donate, I was like, where the hell is Tabby from? I, but I didn't realize it was from a, uh, that you were in America. And that, mm-hmm. that was just, I was like, where is she from? What, like, I don't know what the difference is with what I'm spending, but I was like, I'm just going to go for it. I don't know what you this know, is going to be. <laughs> I'm a US streamer, but ironically, mo- like over 50% of my audience is not in the U S about 30% or so of my audience is in the U S right. 40% is in the UK at least. Um, and then other various countries, but I wanted an organization that would speak to more of an international community also because of my audience. Um, and Ilga, when I reached out to Ilga to tell them like, Hey, I'm doing this charity stream. If you could help, ha- have me if you could help me out with anything you want me to say assist me with any like images um or just posting about your charity i just would love your help and your support and they were very supportive about contacting me via email about what i can do for them like they were the most supportive charity that I've had contact with yet. Um, So I definitely really am glad I stuck with them. They're wonderful people, very kind people, very nice. And it was, you know, just because I had the charity stream in July, it doesn't mean that Pride Month is every month. You can celebrate who you are every month. So that didn't stop me from doing it after the official Pride Month. Um, So Yeah, I really enjoyed that stream. I loved the charity and I definitely want to do more for the LGBTQIA community because I definitely need to uh, educate myself more. And we have a lot of wonderful, a lot of wonderful streamers and people that I know on Twitch that are definitely a part of that community. Right. I want to help out more and definitely support Right. Yeah. I've had um, some of my first, I haven't been streaming very long. And some of the first people that I've met are are from those communities. Mm -hmm. And I always feel it's super important to make sure that they feel comfortable being here. So I'm Mm -hmm. very low tolerance for anything stupid. I'm low tolerance for anything stupid, period. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just, I hate anybody having to feel like they're not welcome. And I understand that feeling. I've been in some streams where jokes were made and things were said uh, about black people. And I was just like, like, I'm here. Like, why, why would you do something like that? And you, and you, yeah. if you don't feel comfortable, like I, I said, uh, and I don't mean this as like a pat on your back, like, because I, I don't want you to feel super uncomfortable that I'm putting you out like a superhero. But I just remember there being uh, somebody who came into your chat and uh, they came out and they felt more comfortable doing it in your stream. And they were saying that they couldn't even do it with their with their families. And I just thought, man, that's that's such shit that people have to to go through things like that. And like nobody should have to. And you did the amazing job that like everybody should do of making sure, well, you're welcome here. You're always welcome here to be who you are and, and all that. Uh, I have like, like I said, very little experience, but I, I did work at uh, Spencer's. I, I always ask people and Spencer's. Oh. Okay. Okay. You do know. I didn't. I grew up in, I don't know where they're located in the U S but I grew up in North Carolina. So we had like a Spencer's and all of the trashier malls. Yes, Uh, yes, yes. And if it's like, yeah, let's go to, let's go to Spencer's and look at all the, the (laughs) oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That back wall. Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) Oh Um, yeah. My my boss uh, was actually a part of uh, that community, and I'll never forget them. They were behind the register whispering, and I was over there just like working, and they were like laughing and whispering. And I thought like the joke was on me, so I walked up. I was like, "What you? What y'all talking about? What y'all laughing at?" And he was like, "Uh, nothing. He said, I don't want to make you uncomfortable." 
And I was like, wait, what? And I was like, wait, what's wrong? And he was like, no, I was just talking about a, a guy I thought was hot. And I just felt like, you know, you, you never have to like whisper anything like that doesn't bother me. Like you could even talk with me. Like, I, like I'm not that type, but I just felt bad. Cause I mean, they're not going to understand that. Cause apparently they go through their everyday life. And maybe that is an issue where they get bullied or picked on or things happen for them saying things. And I just felt so bad that I was, that he felt he had to whisper that with people you know, I don't know. It just, it, I felt bad of like, I wish he didn't feel like that's what he had to do. Like, because mm-hmm. it would never, it's it's sad. It's really sad to see what people of that community go through on a daily basis. Yeah. I've had a lot of questions about my sexuality that I've had to figure out. Um, and luckily when I was young, compared to a lot of people, I think I grew up in a, a fairly... <laughs> fairly uh positive household when it comes to accepting other people for who they are and even I remember someone and when I was in the first grade I'll never forget someone had carved the word gay into the back of a bus seat on my way home from school and I had never heard of that word before and well I did remember actually I did hear that word before it was because the 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 kid that would always get in trouble came up to me and my friends and said, Pokemon's gay. And I was like, well, what is, what is gay? What does it have to do with Pokemon? I saw a gay carved in the back of the bus one day. And I was like, oh yeah, that kid said that Pokemon was gay. What is gay? And I went home. My mom was cooking dinner. I asked mom, what's gay? And she wasn't upset with me I think she was more upset with how I found out about the word and that she had to tell me at a young age and I mean my mom is older she's from a farming Minnesota background so I mean I love her but of course she didn't grow up in a very accepting time for herself right right exactly (laughs) no time is very accepting except for maybe now (laughs) now. maybe now yeah (laughs) and she told me that gay is one two men love each other and i was like so what does that have to do with pokemon yeah like, no. <laughs> you were still worried about it like what <laughs> i was like it didn't phase me like yeah that it did i didn't my mom didn't present it in a way that was negative to me she said like what she thought it meant and there was no native negative connotation to it that I felt she was presenting to me. And I didn't think of it as something that was negative growing up. And my parents were never presented it as negative. They never really exactly brought it up, but they didn't right. put it in a negative connotation. So I right. feel like compared to a lot of households, it, it was better than some people. Than most. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, even though I had, the way that I was raised by my mom, um, people around me, that was not a belief that people had. It was hardcore hatred. Mm-hmm. And that was that was what around it was normal. We didn't like at this age now where I'm zero tolerance for that thing. At that time, uh, my friends were like that. But I mean, at that young, you're not thinking about like, I shouldn't associate myself with these people. It's like, well, they live the way they live and we live the way we live. And that's just it. And we all still kind of kicked it. And it wasn't a thing that got brought up very often to begin with. It was more of like you walk past somebody and it'd be like, you know, faces being made or something being said. But uh, I don't know for us, like, like you just said, growing up in a household where that just the negative part of that was never really a thing for us. So, but mm-hmm. But also in the stream, uh, you did some fun little uh, things for people who donated. I remember when I donated, uh, <laughs> oh, what you did the pickle juice. You did uh, pickle juice. <laughs> I shot a pickle juice and spilt it all over everything. <laughs> oh, my God. That's right. It took forever to get that smell out. God, I could not I still imagine. Have, I have two big pickle jars still in my refrigerator because <laughs> I need to eat those pickles. I can't. I don't want to. I never want to waste. I remember uh, thinking the the longer the stream went on, we might have been like eleven hours in, and I was still thinking like, yo, that pickle juice has to be like stinking up her room right, like that has to be getting on her nerves right oh, now. <laughs> that was just drinking all of that was 
it was fermenting in my gut that it was disgusting. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't drink that. Don't drink it straight yeah. people, please. I actually do that like a weirdo. I actually do that like a weirdo. Yeah. Not often, not all. like, I mean, it's very <laughs> rare that I do it, but I like, uh, it's very, very rare, but I, I do like pickle juice in a glass by itself. It's just not my go-to. Like, it's not something I think about. Like, let me go get pickle juice so I can drink it. But if it's like in the refrigerator, I mean, I, yeah, I would, I would, I would do it. <laughs> I could see it as like a beer chaser or something. I don't like, a, yeah. I don't, it looks like actually, do some people have that with like a Bloody Mary or something? Or am I just thinking out my ass? Um, I'm not <laughs> sure. I was always the guy who showed up and then whatever you gave me, I drank. I was never like the, oh, man. the other than hypnotic. I, I went to hypnotic and gin and juice. That was like, if I bought liquor, that was what I got. Other than that, if I showed up, you could throw me anything. But after I've had so many shots of something, I don't even give a fuck what it is. We were mixing things. I'd have a beer after drinking like three shots of vodka. Like we were just everywhere. <laughs> oh God. You need... that, that would not be me personally. <laughs> but uh why don't you say some of the things i remember pickle juice and some of these are wild i'll let you i'll let you tell them but what else did people get for donating um i pied myself in the face yes and i was very happy to do that uh i was really excited for people to get to get to that stretch goal i was writing on people's names that uh on my body that donated a certain amount i still have i have the balloons still that are deflating from that stream <laughs> that if you donated five dollars i'd oh sorry about that that i would blow up a balloon and put their name on the balloon and they're still there <laughs> um and i wore a maid costume at one point as a stretch goal and oh yeah i have I the I most have, important I have bean boozled here and I have I still have crickets and I have larvae. Oh my god. Eats. I couldn't do it to you. I donated twice. And the first one I did the pickle juice and the second I said just write just write my name down. Do not eat no crickets or oh, maggots. I do remember that you said that. Yes, <laughs> I was like, no, Come I couldn't. On. Do you know you want to. <laughs> What's funny is I was looking at what on my Portland trip that I'm, that I'm planning. I seen that there's places that serve. I was looking at cool things you could do and there was like oh they have restaurants that you can eat grasshoppers and bugs and things i thought what okay. yeah and then like you did that and i was like wait this is more normal than i thought just go on amazon um i feel like it's so much more normalized in different parts of the world than here and it's really in terms of protein it's like the the protein of the future when it comes to being more environmentally friendly but right. it's not like i want more parts of the u.s to get used to it first before i go buy out more uh freeze-dried bugs on amazon <laughs> what did what did it taste like oh there are different flavors so the they just like it's more like it's like potato chips it's like a flavor sprinkled onto the crickets and the larva like this one's cheddar cheese the, these crickets are sour cream and onion. So it's like the same as kind of getting potato chips with the with the powdery flavoring on, on top. So there's nothing weird or disgusting taste to it or like it. I mean, the texture of both oh is gosh. very different. Um, I would say the larva go down easier than the crickets. The crickets kind of get stuck in your teeth with the legs and the antenna and the wings. And I was like, I was definitely at moments I was like, I'm sorry, like I'm stuck <laughs> in my teeth. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I'm not sold. I'm not sold so far. I'm <laughs> I'm cool. I'm cool on the bugs. <laughs> what was your well, favorite to do? You into it. No, definitely not. No, no, no. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. But what was your favorite to have to uh to do or did, or did you say the pie was your favorite? Yeah, I think the pie was my favorite because I was really looking forward. I don't know. I just I, I like getting a nice pie and then I, I pie myself in the face and then I can eat the pie afterwards, especially if I bought a lemon meringue pie. And when I saw that on the store at the store, I was like, oh, that's going to be nice and tasty yeah. afterwards. <laughs> I, I, this is I'm glad you brought this up about the pie, because I have been planning. Uh, I told my chat when we get to 300 followers, uh, I'll do a pie to the face. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, when you did it, I was like, that looks as cool as what I what I envisioned it would be. Like, it looks <laughs> freaking awesome. But how did you, because I went to go look at pies, and I was like, that's going to hurt. <laughs> well, I mean, is someone else going to throw it? Are you going to throw it at your own face? Like, you don't want someone to punch you with a pie. Right. <laughs> and but obliterate my, it. <laughs> did yours have, like, my, the ones I was looking at had, like, uh, I don't even know how, I'm going to sound so stupid explaining this, but, like, the lines going across, it looks hard. No, it's very airy. Um, you don't want to destroy after the cream, after the whipped cream on top or the meringue on top. You don't want to destroy the filling underneath that. You don't want to go too hard. You need like this, uh, this sweet spot area of force to the face with the okay. pie. Like, and I kept telling people like, yeah, I'm going to cream pie myself in the face. Cause it's a creamy pie. And people were like, don't say cream pie. And I'm like, cream pie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did. I can't lie. I laughed when you first said it on the stream. I was like, "That's anal, anal glands and cream pies." Yep. <laughs> That's a tabby stream. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was something that, and then we went just. I don't know. I just went crazy. I was like, you know what? I know three hundred doesn't sound like super successful to a lot of people, but like going back to what we were saying about being so antisocial, I was just like, I got three hundred people to follow me on Twitch. Yeah. This is How dope. How long have you been on Twitch? Uh, since last October. See, it took me like three to four months to even get affiliates when I first started. Yeah, and now it's been almost three years. And it really, you just have to keep grinding. You got to keep yeah. working at it. Um, yeah. But it's, when you see those numbers keep growing and piling up, it's, it's very rewarding. It is. It is. And I told them, I was like, all right, so you know what? We got to 300. I'll do more than the pie in the face. Like I went and bought a box of uh, elite trainer Pokemon cards. We'll, we'll open up and yeah. told them, yeah, I told them we'll do the pie to the face. We'll play some games. And uh, I'm letting, they're voting right now in the discord on whether it's going to be like an ice cream party or a pizza party. And I just thought, I don't know. I know this feels more like a thousand follower type thing, but I just, oh, fuck it. Like, let's just have a good time. Like, I, yeah. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> I remember still wanting to do like a huge, like when I was hitting like 300 to 500 followers, I still wanted to do like a big charity stream and even earning, I don't even remember how much I earned on my first charity stream. And it was for, um, it was in regards to the California wildfires and I didn't raise much for my first charity stream, but I was still proud of myself for doing it and raising some money for a good cause. And yeah, it's, it gets so exciting when you're like celebrating those, those, those numbers that accomplishment. It does. And I like what you said, because b- before we go, I do want to get just a few advice, uh, tips for you, for people that are coming up, including myself, because I struggle with things too, but just like what you were just saying about, uh, it wasn't that successful the first time, but you were so proud of yourself, just finding the courage to do it. Like I was telling my friend, like, I'm kind of worried about this 300 follow part. Like, what if nobody comes and I'm sitting here looking like a jackass, like, like and, mm-hmm. but you have those friends that are just like, dude let's just have a good time. Like, let's just have fun. And that's all that matters at the end of the day. Like eventually you're going to grow and things are going to happen, but I'm not in a steady spot where some days I can have up to like 19 people in and we're having a good time. And then it'll be three or four people for like two weeks. And then maybe it'll jump back up again one day and then it'll go Mm -hmm. right back. Like it happens. Exactly. Finding that courage to like, sometimes I'm just like, I don't know. I don't want to play. I, I, I'll find games that I want to play. And I'm just like, I don't want to play that because what if like, I can't grow on that game. There's not going to be people who come and watch like my community don't like it. Instead of just having fun, I, I double think things like that. So what do you say for people who, who go through that? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, Twitch being what it is or any, any platform, really, it's a numbers game in terms of the algorithm and the viewer count. But I've learned that I've learned that I'm just going to play what I want to play, no matter if someone gifts me a game or in regards to what's popular right now. I don't play the popular games. I don't play Fortnite. (laughs) I don't play those um, multi, like, I don't like playing multiplayer games. I like story-based games. Um, And that's not really what you see on the top of the charts on Twitch. Right. Um, Really? Sorry. Excuse me. 
No, you're good. Um, you're good. <laughs> um, but uh, you just, if you're going to play a game that you love to play, the numbers really aren't going to matter as much. I, I'm super excited to go through Mass Effect Legendary Edition because I love Mass Effect so much for many different reasons, mostly Garrus, but many different reasons. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah. And some people don't want to see someone keep playing that consistently for months, <laughs> yeah. um, like one through three, but that's what I want to do. And if that's what I want to stream, that's what I'm going to do because that's what makes me happy. And that's what keeps me motivated to come back and stream more is something that I want to do. Uh, I'm not going to try and put on a fake smile for a game I don't like. Uh, I've and I do it, that. I do and that. It doesn't work. And I've also been there with like, oh, what's popular right now? Can I play that? Oh, I don't know. Like if I want to play that. Um, and another rule I have is that if I, if I look at myself in the mirror, because I do have, I, I do struggle sometimes mentally, like a lot of people do. And if I can't look at myself in the mirror and smile at my reflection, then I'm, I'm not going to stream today because then I can't put on a smile for other right. people. I can't talk about things about topics. Like if I'm, I don't want to talk that day yeah. or smile. So then I'll, I'll say, sorry, guys, not in the mood to stream today. Uh, you just, you can't, you can't force yourself to do these things, even though sometimes you might say that the grind, you need to force that grind. Sometimes you, you have to draw that line in the sand too, and just say your, yourself and your mental health comes first. It shows, it definitely shows when the streamer doesn't want to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Or they're, or they're playing something that they don't want to play. Yeah. Yeah. That too. Uh, that if they're having like, like you said, if you, if you need a day to take off and relax, definitely do it i've been the one who streamed and uh i've had people who messaged me i was like bro you didn't look like you wanted to be there to be honest like are you cool like everything yeah. okay and i was like i shouldn't have streamed <laughs> to be and honest sometimes like i the people that come to see you for you they will be totally fine if you take a day off if you need yeah. some time to yourself because they're the real the real pals the real audience that you want to keep and they'll be there if you take a break and as far as long as you need and come back. Um, the people that just say like, oh, just the like the yes people just go keep on grinding and keep on being on Twitch. Like, oh, you weren't there. Why weren't you on stream today? I wanted to see you. Yeah. I mean, they'll they'll come and go. Uh, the real people that you want following you care about you and love you for you. I, I agree a thousand percent. I have um I have one guy that uh he's seen my very first stream ever. Well, my, okay, so my very my very very first one. He wasn't there for that. My very first one went bad because I just started and I didn't I didn't realize my Wi Fi wasn't that great. Like oh, yeah. I needed yeah. yeah I needed an Ethernet cord. <laughs> I needed an mm -hmm. Ethernet cord and didn't know. So it was a terrible stream. It lasted maybe like 25, 30 minutes. And I just had eventually had to cut it off. And I was so down because I don't have streamer friends or anybody who knows anything about gaming like that. So my games are real. My friends are real casual gamers, like Call of Duty and things like that. Like, and we'll get online and play. But as far as like streaming equipment and stuff, like they don't they don't know how to fix that. And so I just got down and out. And I was like, you're either going to get on Google and figure this out or you're going to give up. And so I got on Google and figured out using Ethernet cord and uh, my very next stream, which I consider my first. But he was there. Uh, for my first wrestling stream and he never followed or anything and then the oh. next time that i streamed he was there and he finally like my bad i forgot to follow you last time i was like how the, <laughs> how the fuck did you find did you just go through wrestling and just look at he, <laughs> people all the time you must yeah and he <laughs> has awesome. never he's never missed a stream and it goes back to what you were saying about people that that love you no matter what i'm sure i've played games that he didn't give a fuck about but he was always there to hang out and talk and he's never missed a stream and it, um, mm -hmm. even if it's I, just him yeah. you're just thankful that you have somebody that's always there you never i never had to scream to nobody <laughs> that's awesome oh. I, I can definitely think about a few people that are exactly like that from the very first streams and th those people are amazing and they are i love them so much they know who they are
<laughs> exactly exactly and they're always in the discord anything you do they're always there to even if they don't really care or want to do it they're always like yeah I'll join in with whatever you got going on so yeah the real mvps of the streams <laughs> real mvps well before we head out is there anything else that you wanted to say uh as far as maybe advice or anything that you want to get off your chest or anything like that um well i think just the thing that what I said earlier, just, you know, follow your heart and do what you want to do. I know I came on to, to Twitch and YouTube and uh, I got started uh, on streaming because I was in a very dark place trying to find what I wanted to do with my life right. with, with veterinary medicine and everything. And that's when this, about the same time I started Twitch and streaming was about the same time I started uh, going to vet school, going to vet tech school and getting into the field that I loved. So again, I'm just reminding you guys to just follow what you want to do and don't listen to anyone else. Yes. And that, oh my God, that advice is the greatest. I've been through some situations in my life where listening to other people dug me such a deeper hole. So that advice, it's, it's very, very true. I try not to ever, if somebody asks me for advice, I, I try to give my best advice and always tell them, but you do what you feel is right for you. Because the way I would do something doesn't always work for everybody else. Exactly. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this was fun. It's a very our very first episode of Another Cup. And uh, we got the, the, the only person that I asked. It, the first person that came to mind. And uh, I guess I'll tell the story real quick too before we get out of here. So yeah. like I told you about social anxiety, uh, I work at a chicken plant and it's as boring as it sounds. For eight hours, I put chicken on it though. That's what I do for eight hours. And uh, just in my mind, I was thinking like, man, one, I got to get the hell out of here. That's always my thought. And then two, uh, <laughs> I was like, if I did this, who would I, who would I want to talk to? And I was like, Tabby Cat is super awesome but i was having my freak out of like i'm gonna sound like such an asshole when i ask her <laughs> she would she like to do this i get to the car my lunch break's only like 30 minutes so i get to the car and um i send the message and i'm just like i'm reading it back i was like i sound like such a jackass <laughs> i hate, I hate oh, this uh, and then, you're before, always your worst you're always your toughest critic okay yes yes i know we had a conversation our very first interview on our crooked lens podcast he had a conversation with me that because i had a freak out asking him to and uh before you could respond i had to go back into work for another uh we work another two hours and then come back out for for our second break and i was like oh now i gotta go in here for two hours and think about how fucking lame i sounded oh. asking her to do this <laughs> you're very professional <laughs> but uh yeah this was awesome it went just as uh good as i thought and next time uh that we have you back we we got to do some things like i don't know we got to find something like uh maybe some conspiracy theories or aliens or uh anal glands or something that we can yeah. go on here have talk some about, coffee and have talk some about laughs. wrestlers wrestling <laughs> yes for you can sure, teach for me sure. about wrestlers there, <laughs> there we go uh but for the people who want to uh, follow you on anything, what uh, is there anything that oh. you want to give them? Any socials or Twitter or whatever? Oh, gosh. I am on almost all the platforms, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, um, as Tabby Cat, T-A-B, two I's, K-A-T, uh, Tabby Cat. Um, and definitely follow me on Twitch because I am on there the most, I would say, or Twitter. And um, yeah, and I'll, I'd love being on here. Thank you so much for having me. I'd love to come again. I can't, I can't wait. This was a lot of fun. Thank you uh, so much. And uh, yeah, we will see you next time. <laughs>